Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. Now, calm down, calm down, this is just a voiceover, but this is the review of the Cabo Mantis Pro 60 volt 24 and a half amp hour e-scooter. So, let me tell you more about it. And big thanks to ultimateebike.com for providing me this scooter for testing purposes. They reached out to me and said, hey, you want to test out the Cabo Mantis Pro? And I said, of course. They have a big assortment of PVs on their side, including scooters, which are called Rolerek in their language, which is, which is uh, Hungarian. So feel free to check their site out. Now back to the scooter. I was able to do most of the usual tests I do for scooters, including the range test and a couple of hill climbs, but I did not do the 30 degree incline and I have a limited amount of recordings because in the meantime I did break my right hand. And if you want to see an update on that, just subscribe, wait for the next video. And possibly I also show a uh, 30 degree incline because in this video there will be only a 25 and 35. So the Cabo Mantis Pro, this is a scooter that is very popular and it's talked about a lot. Um, I think mainly because of the design and the specs. So the specs look really quite convincing. Um, it is a 60 volt scooter, 24 and a half amp hour giving you a total of around 1500 watt hours of battery. It is a dual motor scooter with 1800 watts of peak power per motor, so total power of 3600 watts. I did weigh it myself and it's around 30 kilograms, so not 29 what you see everywhere, but 30, quite a bit lighter than the Zero 10X. Top speed allegedly is 70 kilometers per hour, but later on in the video well, you'll find out that it's more like 55, 60. And yeah, it looks rather good, has suspension and, you know, just a perfect competitor to the Zero 10X. Now look, there are people who love the Cabo Mantis Pro and the ones who don't, don't like it so much. I, I'm sort of in the middle and I'm trying to show you all the good sides of it and bad sides like based on the facts, based on what riders also experience on the scooter. And I told you before that this scooter is a lot lighter than the uh, Zero 10X and you can see it in a lot of space places. For example here, the, the, the thing that connects uh, the stem where it connects to the deck is really quite narrow and thin compared to the Zero 10X. Like the uh, footrest in the rear is also thinner. All in all the deck is really quite thin and I heard that they use a different kind of metal a bit softer than the ones on the Tech Life X7 aka Zero 10X and yeah there were a couple of models which I saw where the stem broke so I think this is a scooter designed mostly for up to 80 kilograms. I think if you're heavier, you should not buy it. Now, a couple of the issues were resolved. For example, the clamp up here is now as thick or even thicker than on the um, Zero 10X, but in the middle, I don't know if they also, you know, made the bolts uh, more robust or changed the structure. All in all, uh, I mean, you can see in a lot of places that this scooter is a lot lighter than the Zero 10X. Also, the front swing arms here, the rear swing arms, um, yeah. You, you can see that in a lot of places. Um, the suspension here is really quite uh, stiff. It's, it doesn't ride like a Zero 10X. It's a lot stiffer. It rides more like a, you know, dual turn Three, something like that. If you want to have comfort, I think the Tech Live X7 or Zero 10X would be a better choice here. Um, yeah, this is a ride stiff, but again, this is really cool for riding on the road. You feel a bit more planted, less bouncy. Definitely, definitely a less 
bouncy scooter than the um, 10X. The stem here is actually thicker than on the 10X. I'll tell you about the 10X a lot in, you know, while showing you this scooter because this is like the closest thing uh, to this scooter. I like the kickstand, it's in the right position. The lighting is really bad. Diodes here are a lot weaker than on the 10X and if you break, I mean you can barely see that you are you're, you're breaking. I mean, yeah. On the on other scooters there's a blinking and the lights turn off, but here yeah, it's barely barely visible. Mud guards way too short. I mean, this is probably the the short mud guard record I've seen till now. I like the brakes. Uh, they're hydraulic. I think these are 100 uh, 40, yeah, 140 millimeter discs. Um, though these are hydraulic zoom brakes, um, they don't feel as good as NUTT brakes or uh, you know either hydraulic brakes. You do have to use quite a bit of force to brake, but still, it's better than a mechanical uh, system. The deck is quite spacious. You know, you can rest your foot against the rear. Uh, footrest, you know, it's pretty cool, but if you drive fast, this thing just flops around. I mean, and it's like too short because there should be some here. I mean, just in my opinion, and all in all, you know, quality wise, I don't know, you know, there's there's a hole here, and yeah, that's that's not really the best. I mean, I like how the lights are integrated, but yeah, this this, this is not too good. There's just a singular charge board on the other side, uh, so here. Charges uh, with the standard charger in around 11-12 hours. Um, I don't know how fast you can fast charge it, maybe someone some in the comments uh, can help out with that. And yeah, it has this awesome side um, LED lights which are super bright. You, you are seen from, from a far away distance in the night. This is really, really cool. And you turn them on on the handlebar. There's a button here. And it's, this is just the light button. Um, on the handlebar you can also see the brakes, the zoom brakes. And with this part you can actually lock the scooter in place when you fold it. This is not present on the 0 and 10X. This is, makes carrying it around way easier. So this is pretty cool. This hook just hooks in place here and you can carry it around. Sorry, I can't do it right now. Um, this bell is mine, so don't worry about that. It broke during the fall on the Mantis. I love the mini motors display, it's super responsive. I think this is the best display uh, or best throttle system you can get on a scooter. Uh, highly, you know, configurable, you can select like, the strength of the motor brake, you can select uh, the cruise control. You can just see a video up in the corner here I made about this display. This is the way to go and I think this should be also on the 10X. There is a Eco Turbo uh, button so Eco just limits you I think to 25 kilometers an hour. Never pushed it so I don't know. And there's a single dual motor button. And you press single motor it just rides with the rear motor. Sadly there is no um, remote in uh, this configuration. There is no uh, key but it depends sort of on the distributor and it's really easy to aftermarket provide to the scooter or fit to the scooter so yeah that's not a big issue but could be here would be nice ultimate e-bike think about it there's also ultimate e-bike running here and and here so that's you know a small touch by the distributor yeah kamikaze x So you know, this is a you know sort of torque-oriented motor. Here you can see this free spin. Seventy-two is the top top speed you can get with the wheel spinning. So top speed I achieved is quite reasonable. Of course, all the parameters are set to max.
now will be time to test the 25 degree incline with the Manis. Should be no issues at all here. <laughs> yep, and no issues at all. Now I'll also try 35, but yeah, I don't have any hopes for that. So what are my final thoughts on the Mantis Pro? And first of all I wanted to say that I thought that it would be faster because off the line it is a bit faster than the 23 amp hour version of the Zero 10 x but after a while you go up over 55 kilometers an hour and the Zero 10 x just flies past you. So you know the 60 volt Zero 10 x probably is noticeably faster than <laughs> the uh, Mantis Pro uh, 60 volt. There's no denying that the battery here is bigger than in the Zero, so this is a you know, cool thing. I don't know if I would be able to go 55 kilometers on a 23 amp hour 10x, but it would not be probably far off because I wasn't driving like super fast in the range test. I, uh, I did. So in total, it is more expensive than the 10x, but do you really get more for what you pay for? Well, you get less weight, you get a better display, you, you get, uh, I don't know, if you feel like it, you have a better design, but some just say it's worse. You do get a bit better brakes, um, but you lose in top speed, you lose in rigidity, Anyhow, my conclusion is buy the Emotion V11. So if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. He's so slow. As you can see, he's very slow, really, really slow, like a snail. <laughs> so the max speed, what is max speed there? The max speed is around 60 kilometers an hour. Oh, it's so slow. Disappointingly slow. Yeah. <laughs> the acceleration seems fine, but also yeah. it's quite comfy. Suspension is rather rough, sporty. I don't know, man. I don't know. I like the sound of the square wave controller. I don't know, man. I don't know. Zero 10X is more comfy. And Z11 is a different world. Fanic is riding on the MSS. 
it is faster than this. I was riding full throttle and barely could get to him. Sorry.